Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Ah, this is from Mrs. Moyal, Lechvod Rebelli Stefanski. My husband, the Tzaddik, yesterday donated a kidney to a Jew that he doesn't even know through Matnat Chaim. And even though he was in the hospital recuperating from the surgery, he didn't miss the daf yoimi. Ashrecha shenatata bohavat limut Torah kazu miyuchedet. This is in Hebrew. Thank you for instilling in him such a love for Torah, such a beautiful love for Torah. Kish Baruch should continue to give you strength to be made for Torah. Mahavo msimcha shana tova aktiva v'chatimat tova. That's his wife, obviously writing. This was a great one. Many people send an email saying the sheer changed their lives. While it sounds nice and dramatic, it's also not true. Take the last sentence with a grain of salt and a heaping tablespoon of sugar. You see, when somebody finds an avenue to connect to Hashem and grow in his Hashem, it's not called a change of lives, rather it's called a discovery of their lives. The avoid of the Jew is not to change our lives more deeply. Our avoid is to discover and earth and reveal the true aspect of greatness, godless purity, holiness that already exists within us. What the shir provides for so many, myself included, is an opportunity to connect to who we really are already at our core. The shir has allowed us to ship away at the other stuff and reveal what's really on the inside. There's a well-known tale about the artist Michelangelo. He's asked about the difficulties that he must have had in Countered during his sculpturing, the masterpiece called David, he responded, it's actually easy, all I have to do is chip away at the parts that are not David. We have goodness and holiness within, we just have to chisel away the superfluous materialism. This is what the tshuva, this is what tshuva is all about, it's not about changing who we are, again, we're not meant to change our lives, tshuva means return, we're returning to the kid in the inner state of truth, good is the holy. Then the why shear is not life changing. It's much deeper than that. Then the why shear is a life discovering, life revealing. Thank you, Uri Strom, Rabbi Uri Strom Yishkoyach. And one more from Eli Lef- Lefkowitz. I've been a part of this year since the first daf of see, I guess that's not long enough to start speaking a bit. Stefanski, here's the story. I was in Prague last week as part of a short heritage trip. Went to visit the Noida Buddhist Caver, who I'm a 10th generation descendant of. Mother's mother, 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 father, 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 father. So the visit had, I think he's joking. I don't know. So the visit had some extra special meaning. I've been saying to him in order, in order, over the, of the, over the prior couple of days at other farm and was in the 60, 70 range when I got to this cave. Lo and behold, I'm reading to him and boom, I get it to the Pasuk and to Hillim, Chapter 76. I'm not a big Tehillim guy, so I did not know that the Pasuk was coming. What a big surprise. I read it aloud and then turned to my wife and actually said, can you believe it? Ah, what a kiss from Hashem. This is what he said to his wife. Can you believe it? Ah, what a kiss from Hashem. I guess it could be worse things to emulate and mimic. Am I right? What's the ultimate point of this email? I'm not quite sure, but perhaps it has to do with the perspective of everyday events that occur, which is the bonus material we get with Yashir. P.S. I wrote this email and saved it as a draft. Was debating whether to send it. But then, while catching on today's daf, pay test, at minute 50, you quoted the Noi So I had to send it, and there's another kiss from Hashem. PBS, I was told that one of the big Christian names back then is visiting Noi Biyudo, maybe had some sort of connection with him, but need to corroborate before spreading things. Eli Lefkowitz Yishkoyach, Raboy site. Today is a beautiful Lagat of the daf, and we're going to have to put it on one and a half speed. So don't do that yourself. The coil of the month, Binyam Rosenfeld for Atzloch in business. Coil for the day, Yaakov Slatis, 13 yards out of my grandmother, Brindel Bas Chaim Peretz Akoyen. Coil of the day, Morris Elbaz, Lili Nishmat, Ura Bat Zakia. The Masech is sponsored for the safe and speedy return of all the hostages, Paras Achoydish, Eli Stefanski, Moshe Tzvi Dauber, Abba Renner, for the Rufur Shleima and safe and speedy return of our Chayelim, Paras Achoydish, Lili Nishmat, Zachai Ben Moshe, Lili Nishmat, Zachai Bas Yosef. Parnas HaChodesh, matching rebellious donation, L'schot, Chayelim for the month. Parnas HaChodesh, Biyom Rosenfeld, for all the schosim that come from supporting Limerat Torah. Parnas HaYoy, Morris Elbaz, Lili Nishmat, Orbat Zakia, the Neshama should have an Aliyah. Parnas HaChodesh for the month, for the art, for schos, for Rebelli, and the whole MDY staff. They continue to make Torah so enjoyable for so many. The boys say, here goes that Gadotun.
We're holding three lines from the bottom of Tzaddik Omid Beis. Tonor Abonon. We said Shom Aleichem to Motzah Shabbos. Right? Didn't they say hello to you? On Motzah Shabbos? And we sing Veshav Abonim? Do we? And your son? Okay. We got to be here every day. Zog the Heli Gimar. Tonor Abonon. Who? Who? No, maybe. I guess he wasn't. Right. Okay. Oh, so I have a question for the Oilam. But this one, do me a favor. Don't scream out the answer. I want to see, show me your hands. Don't be shy. If you know the answer, David, listen to this one. I'm going to ask you a series of four questions, and it's Nagia like, yeah, for the middle of the year. Does anybody here know who Rebbe Kiva's wife's name is? Just raise your hand if you know. Rebbe Kiva's wife's name. Rebbe Kiva's wife's name. No, I mean, you know the answer. So raise your hand. <laughs> you have to raise your hand. Okay. Does anybody here know? Oh, that's a good question. Does anybody here know Avram Avinu's mother's name? Yes. Besides anybody? Yes. You know, I, I, I wanted to ask that for you actually. I'm serious because I know that you know this stuff. You know the name. I don't know his mother. Ash, you know? What's her name? You're right. <laughs> okay. Well, when you when it comes to you, let me know. Um, be careful when you raise your hand because I might ask you. <laughs> Does anybody know Haman her Russia's mother's name? No. Not nobody. Not. But you learned it yesterday. <laughs> uh, the truth is, I forgot about these two names, but Shimshon's wife, I remember. Yeah. Uh, uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so Shimshon's wife or mother? Shimshon's mother. I know his mother also. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Well, anybody know Shimshon's mother besides these two? Doily <laughs> Oilam. Anybody? Nobody. See, that's why I surround myself with these kind of guys over here. What's Shimshon's mother's name? Honest. That's right. I, I knew this guy knows it. <laughs> and one last one. Does anybody know David Amelech's mother's name? Yeah. You know it without peeking in the art school? Yeah. Somebody were from his wife's name. But no, let's go. Let's hear it. Very good. Bas? I have no idea. Neither do I, even though I learned it five times. <laughs> A doll? No, that's something else. I don't know. Okay, fine. So we're gonna. Those are the names we're gonna see today in today's Gemara. If anybody ever asks you, it's on Babas or Daf Sadik Aleph. We had the schos of interviewing people in the Merkaz two hours before the Hebrew Shir, so it didn't like come together well. But one of them, I bumped into this Sadik. What's your name? What? Effie. Effie on his motorcycle with the. He's a Magin David Adom guy with the whole Vush, and he knew. He, I was giving out money. Yeah, you can imagine the amount of people are us oh, Okay. <laughs> Says the Haley Gemara three lines from the bottom. That's how they come in base. Turn around, bottom. And we're gonna have to pick up a little bit of the pace here because it, it takes a lot. Based on my experience from yesterday's shear, this is a long shear. Eight weeks in Paris, marriage is real. Dvarim sheshem chayin nefesh. You're not allowed to take out produce out of Eretz Yisrael. Are you allowed to take a shroigim out of Eretz Yisrael? Probably yes, but. They, they, they do discuss it, but let's say things that people live with, kigon yenois, shmonim, wine, oils, slossois, fine flour, all sort to take out of very disrobe. Review the Mimser Matri Yain. Review the Mimser says the opposite. It's great to get rid of wine. Mipne, shimemayed, this atifla. As the Rashbam says, the famous Nichnas Yain, Yotzasoid, people talk a lot of crazy stuff. They give out over their personal information and stuff. It's better. Export the wine to somewhere else. They had it in Neuer volume on the uh, on Purim. I think it was like the last Purim. Uh, the guy got on the radio and said, you, gotta have, you have to be very, very careful. There's cre- it's very, very dangerous out there on the roads. There's crazy amount of drunks. Crazy amount of drunks. And unfortunately, they all gave their wives to drive. So you got to be really careful. Yeah, it's one of the... <laughs> Okay, shame, shame, it took three It took three Just like you're not allowed to take you out to Chutzlaret, it's Israel is Syria. Syria. So, what's the Chiddush in Syria? Syria was a Kibush Yachid of an Amelech, conquered it, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't agreed upon with everyone. So, it's a Kibush Yachid considered that he conquered it individually. So it doesn't have the same, doesn't have Gdusha. 
It's not considered conquering. Rebbe says it's okay when you go from a very the, the border city of Syria, whatever's on the border, to Israel, that's already that's okay to export to there. Ninety daf into Baba Basra. Ninety. There's more than a lot of mesechtas. A mistakrim bears this role, but varm sheish bohem chayin nefesh. You now let to be the middleman, the what is it called in English? The the broker, the the wholesaler. You now let to be a wholesaler when it comes to things that have chayin nefesh, like flour, other stuff. Says the Rishbam. However, if you produce something like bread. Then you're allowed to be the middleman. You're allowed to have a middleman. If you're going yeno shmana muslasais again, wines, which were very, it was a big staple food, shmanim, oils, and fine flour. Omar Allah, Al Rebbe Lazar ben Azario, showing mistaker biyayim Hashem, and this makes a lot of us balabatim feel good that even Rebbe Lazar ben Azario would deal, would sell, would try to make a parnasa. In fact, there's a guy, a satmer guy, that put together a list of 241 amiraim and tanaim that used to work. Couldn't get a hold of it. But the famous Rabbi Yechana Sandler, he was a Sandler. There's a Rabbi Yitzchak Napcha, there's a Rav Papa sold beer, the Chavetz Chaim sold Sfarim. It was a thing. He had it on the grocery store. The Chavetz Chaim on the grocery yeah, store? Of course. Okay. Huh? Yeah. He used to close the store after they made enough money for the day. I thought that was on the Sfarim store. No. Nope. It was on the grocery yeah. store. So it wasn't so the grocery store wasn't to, to service the community. It was just for himself. Because like, let's say I need a, a thing of milk. It's closed because he made enough for us. Other people are making money because everybody wanted to buy it from him. Ah, it's like the the stipler wouldn't sell his farm unless you really wanted to learn from it. The whole thing. Okay, very nice. Says the Gemara. He Rebbe Lozman Zaria would make. He would buy from somebody and be the middleman, be the broker, be the wholesaler from behind the shaman. So why? Be the ayin. So we look here. Rebuda holds like Rebuda. That's better to get rid of all the drunks. B'shemen v'asri the rebbe lozav and azari shkiach mishcha. There was a lot of oil, so it wasn't a big deal if he dealt with it. You want you get from another place. Tana rabbanu, a mistakrim pamayim bebeitzim. You shouldn't do twice whatever it is. We're going to see in a second when it comes to eggs. Why? Omar mari bar mari pligi bar rabbi shmuel chad omar chatre. Don't try to make hundred percent profit on it. Now. First of all, we all remember three, when was it, three years ago, four years ago, I don't even remember anymore. Corona, Pesach, Corona, when uh, there was a sign up here that a guy was selling his apartment for two trays of eggs. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> eggs were very expensive. So is it a problem, not a problem? So the Rashbam says, eggs are not a staple. You can live without egg. So you won't have that cake or whatever it is. Besides, it's a lot of tircha. It takes a long time. There's a lot of work involved in dealing with eggs, so therefore they allowed you to go above the, the shtus. Yesterday we said you can't make more than a shtus. Eggs are different. So, but, but don't do it 100%. 90% is okay. Bechadomer Tagr, the Tagr, don't be the, the broker to the broker. Two brokers is also. I don't know, I just remember reading that in Russia, like one of the worst things you could do during, especially you know, when it was heavy communism. To go and buy something and sell it to somebody else was what? Like the biggest no-no. Like ruined their whole, the whole market. Everything is about, you know, everybody is the same. So you're buying and selling. So they said, like, if you were caught with anything, so the best thing to do is tell the cop you stole it. Everybody steals. But to sell it, for that, that that's already, that's a big no-no. So it says Gemara, Torah about matriin. It's mamish erev shoshana. Matriin means to use the the trua, the the shayfar al pramatya afilu b'shavas pramatya. So it doesn't literally mean to blow the shayfar. It means that we could daven. Usually you're not allowed to daven on Shabbos or something. But when your livelihood depends on this, your, the whole city makes a certain thing. We all grow corn and. Corn has very low value in the world, so then you're allowed to daven on Shabbos for that. Hashem, help us. We're going to starve here. Omer Rabbi Yochanan, an example would be clay pishtam be linen in bubble. I guess that was their big thing, their export. V'yayim Hashem Eretz Yisrael, and wine and oil in Eretz Yisrael. Omer Rabbi Yosef, would dissolve a kom asar b'shito when 10 became worth 6. In other words, when it dropped 40%, then you're allowed to daven on Shabbos. But if it only dropped 35%, you're not allowed to daven on Shabbos for it. 
And Yoytzi Meret, oh, oh, this is a sugya. I'm going to ask the Olam. Because I, I said something about my son, my son and his yeshiva, Rosh the Shualam, he, he already put it on the, 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 the family group. My wife already took me and to the side, gave me Shafi Malkus. I'm asking you not to talk to my wife about this Gemara over here. <laughs> Maybe you should. She's thinking about this Gemara. Omer, turn around bottom. Ein yoitzim eret l'chutz l'aretz. And now it'll be very strong. Yeah, it'll be very strong. LMK don't do so besela. Usually you could get four, call it pounds, okay? Four pounds of, of flour for one dollar. If it went down, if the price is so high that you could only get two pounds for a dollar, that means it doubled in price. Produce doubled in price, went from four. The amount that you're getting is half the amount for the same, for the same amount of money. Then you're allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael. So you're not allowed to leave. Rebchaim Kanevsky never let anybody leave, you know, even this, that. You have to have a really good excuse to leave. Why? Because Eretz Yisrael has all the mitzvahs. Even if you walk, you walk from your house to the base marriage here, you get a mitzvah just walking. If you walk and you talk and learning, there's a guy, yesterday I was standing outside here and there's like a simcha, two nights ago, and a guy walked by, I never saw him before in my life, and he's talking to himself. So I said hello to him. He's like, he showed me, he's in the middle of learning. He's talking and learning. So he didn't want to say goodbye, hello back. People could learn. They could walk while they learn. So you get the Dalai Lama's plus learning. Although I forgot what Rebchaim Kanevsky said. He said something that upset me because I learn, I try to learn on the treadmill. And I think he said that you don't get the uh, schar of the Dalai Lama's because you're walking in one spot. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Oh, Rebbe Shimon. Ema sev, izman she'enoi moitzei likach. Abizman she'en moitzei likach. If you could find produce in the store, I don't care how much it costs. It's, it went up four times the amount. It's not permitted to leave Eretz Yisrael. Obviously, there's some terim. There's uh, like chasinus, for sure not. Skiing, for sure yes. There's, there's different terim. Ask your local gadol. What about Pesach? Pesach, for sure not. Not, not, none of these, none of these. Oh, why do I do it? I'm, you know, everybody has one of very deaf to daven for Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> that and insulting people, Barabbim. Safari? Whoever asked that question is Mamish Arois. Arois, we don't ask dumb questions here in the Shir. Of course. What a mutter. It's a chiyuv. Chiyuv Godel to see Akush Bokus creations. Chasen is no. Chasen absolutely not. Shiva, people go, they fly in for Shiva. Where do we get this stuff from? Oh, so we made a very nice chart here. This will explain everything. Somebody called Nachshim Ben Aminadav, we're going to need it soon. Nachshim Ben Aminadav, everybody knows, he's the one that jumped into the water first. Okay, he was the Nasi of Yehuda. He had four children, as the Gemara is going to say. This is just, uh, we're doing Chazar. Lein Almoni, Salman, Elimelech, and Abba. Abba is not his name. He's the father of Naomi. Now, if you look, Salman had a son. His name was Bayaz. And Abba had a daughter named Naomi. Okay, they were cousins. That's the Negev for the story soon. Elimelech married his niece, Naomi, and they had Machlem Ekilion. So, Elimelech was a Gadol Adar. Machlem Ekilion, G'doyle Adar. What happened to them? They, as we know from Rus, Doilum sleeps usually during, uh, it's a hard one. The, they went to Chutzlar. It's why? Because there was famine in Eretz Yisrael. And they got punished. Why did they get punished? Eli Melech, they weren't Stam people. They took care of the generation. And why did they get punished? Crazy, terrible stuff. They died because they left Eretz Yisrael. Everybody, they're going crazy. This is Naomi. What happened to her? Explains the Rashash. Unbelievable. They were very wealthy. They ran away to Chutzlar to save themselves from the famine. 
And she comes back and everybody says, could you believe it? We stayed here in Eretz Yisrael and look what happened to us. We survived the famine. Look at her. She came back without her children, without her husband. Look at her. She has no money, nothing, zero. Look what happened there. Pella, that's the Teon. What's going on here? That same day that she walked in, Eretz Yisrael, Mesa Ishtay Shel Bayaz. So now let's take a look at the chart. Bayaz was married. Boyaz ended up marrying Rus on the bottom. And together they had a son called Oivet. And Oivet had Yishai, David, and Shlomo. So, yeah. And then they had a grandson, a great-grandson. Okay, so now Rus married Boyaz, but she walked into her Yisrael the day Boyaz lost his wife. Boyaz wouldn't have married Rus had he been married to his wife. So, Akash Baruch Hu did something here very interesting that as soon as Boaz lost his wife, he already, there's already a replacement. Before a person dies, there's already a replacement. So says the Rajbam inside. Here I have it over here. You could see if you don't want to look inside. Says the Rajbam. Unbelievable, and this is something for us to take that. The, the Gemara is teaching us a life lesson here. It's not just a story. Says the Rashbam, what's the, what's the lesson here? Akash Baruch Hu knows what he's doing. And when there's a calamity, there's a, a terrible thing in somebody's family, he should understand. Akash Baruch knows what he's doing. A person shall lift up Akash Baruch. You have to trust Hashem. He knows what he's doing. The very famous one that we know is Purim. Kla Yisrael sinned. How did they sin? By they were nehena misudasay shalachashverish. They went to the meal of achashverish. What happened at the meal of achashverish? That's when he called Vashti. She died, and Esther took over and, and saved Kla Yisrael. It all happened simultaneously. It's all the the refu was there before the maka even. Omar Rabbi Baravuno, interesting. Stam uh, two small problem that okay we're running out of time already, but. If we go back to this chart, Naomi is Boaz's cousin, right? She's the daughter of Abba, her uncle is Salmon, who had Boaz. So when she came back, her plan was to go speak to Boaz's wife, her cousin's wife. She's not going to go talk to her cousin. She's gonna talk to the wife. So listen, I need some money. I'm not doing well. What happened was, Boaz's wife died. So she's, what am I going to do now? I'm stuck. I'm not going to get money. But what happened was, again, this is the Makkah. Not only did she not have to talk to Boaz's wife, but her daughter-in-law, Rus, marries Boaz. Boaz dies the next day. Her daughter-in-law inherits everything, so now she's set. She's set. What you think is, oh, how am I going to do this? She died. Now what? Now what? Now it's even better. What happened to Arpa? And what happened to her? Goliath. She had Goliath. Rus had Dovramelech. So, Omer Rav, Rav, Omer Rav. Ifzon ze Boaz. These are the same people. It's one and the same. Ifzan is the same as Bayaz. Michael Mashwan. What is he trying to tell us here? History? No. the Rav Also, Bayaz is a terrible thing over here. Bayaz had made 120 parties. Lebanov. For his 60 children. Shenemar. He had 30 sons. And 30 daughters. He sent them out. 30 sent out. 30 brought in. And he judged Klai Yisrael for seven years. He made two parties. One for the Erusin, for the ring ceremony, made a whole party. And one for the Nesuin, like a Sherev Brachas, for the, a wedding. Depending, uh, one in the Kala's house, one in the Chasin's house. Depending if it was his son, his daughter. Ube Kulon says the Gemara, terrible thing. Ube Kulon is Yimenez Menoyach. In all 120 parties, he did not invite Menoyach. Menoyach didn't have children. Omar, Kudono Akara my Parli. How is this mule that doesn't have children? How is he going to pay me back? Yeah, we all know that guy in Shul that comes to everybody's kiddish. Now he's coming to every kiddish. When he comes to the kiddish, he says, where's the, where's the good stuff? Where's the good stuff? He wants that expensive liquor. Then when he has to make a kiddish, he does it, you know, in a different country. You're like, oh, yeah. And, and then he has a tiny, I can meet him flying to his kid. You know, he makes this whole thing. We all know these guys. Every shul has that guy. And 
Menoyach, he didn't have children, so he's not going to invite the, he's going to sit by his party, by his chasana, 120 chasanas and shevet brachas, and he's not going to pay him back. Now, we're talking about boyas over here. We're talking about a goladar. How did he insult somebody like that? But Menoyach was very insulted to the point that Kishbar who punished Bayaz, all 60 of his children died when he's still alive. So they want to explain that Bayaz obviously didn't want to hurt his feelings. It came out that he was hurt. He felt that Menoyach would be very uncomfortable. I remember hearing a woman that didn't have children, for, now she has a bunch of children, but she, she said to a chutzpah, I remember saying it and I didn't understand her, but you have to be in that position. She says, a chutzpah, I was standing somewhere and somebody was so insensitive to me. She was talking with her friend about where to buy a stroller. Doesn't she know I don't have children? How could she talk like that? So you're going to go invite somebody to your children's chasana? And he doesn't have any children? You have 60 children. They're all walking down the aisle. All 60 of them. You don't have a single child? No, I don't want to put him in that position. That's what he thought. But on Maisa, Manoyach was very insulted. And like Reb Chaim Shulevitz always says, Midas is fire. So even if you mean well, but at the end of the day, that person gets insulted. Baruch Hu unfortunately punishes for that. Tana, and we learned, Vekulon Mesu Bechayov, when Boyaz unfortunately saw the death of every single one of his children. Finally, that means that's what people say. Bechayecha, the Elad Shitin, even if in your lifetime you, you had 60 children, Shitin Lamalach, what good are they? Ichpal, so Oived, he doubled down, so to speak, Vaoilid Chad, and he had one son. The Meshit and Zarez, he had Oived. Boyaz had Oived, and Oived had Yishai, who had David. So from that one son, had more than all the 60. There's a Chosh of a guy by the name of Rabbi Yankiv Mordechai G. He's like, a, I think he's from uh, England. He learned, uh, you know him? He learned by Rabbi, I forgot, Lakewood, I don't know where he learned. Anyways, he said an interesting uh, thing over here. I thought it was. I think he said it maybe Bahalatza. He said that um, it says in the Pasuk, Avakish Loch Manoyach. Avakish Loch Manoyach. I'm going to find you a Manoyach. So, the, what's Manoyach? So, he explained that according to this Gemara, that all of Bayez's children died. So, Rus didn't want to marry Bayez. She was concerned. She's going to marry Bayez. She's going to have a child. She's going to die. She's going to die. So Nami told her, I am going to invite Menoyach, I'm going to invite him to the wedding. So you're not going to have a problem. Okay. Simon. Melech Avram, Esr Shonim, Shenifta, and Nisnatsi Levadi. Omer Abcholon, Barovo, Omer Rav, Eli Melech, Ve Salmoin, Uploini, Almoini, Bavin, Noami, Kulom, and Inachim, and I'm in Adovim. Here, this is the chart. All four of these people are the sons of Nachim, and I'm in Adovim. Michael Mashmon. Shavi, Lumi, Ashley, Schusova, is even if your father's great. And we may as well be to marry the Chutz Why are we ignoring that? Oh, no, we'll see in a second. Yeah, the Gemara talks about it. Ain't no may as well be shoshi yoy to marry the Chutz Laaret. It's not so posh. There's a gear, not a gear, was Rus Mugieres. Seems like she was. Okay. Ain't no may as well be shoshi yoy to marry the Chutz Laaret. That Avera of leaving her is Israel, the Chutz Laaret. And what it happens to be that we have a lot of people. Gil, what's your name? Gildan? No, what's, what's, what's your full name? Penny. Benny Gildan. Penny. Penny, Penny, Penny Gildan. One guy. Who else made a liah just recently? The two of you. What's your names again? Feldman. Huh? Sure Feldman. Feldman. And? Akiva. Akiva. Who else? Somebody else just went, oh. What's your name? Tell us. It's Roosevelt. In the last month, no? A month and a half. Unbelievable. Who else? There's a bunch. We did a bunch of Shana Bonhams. They're not here, but... No, it makes you feel good. If you leave Eretz Yisrael, you guys are in trouble. <laughs> You're already there. It's different. But the guys that are here and go back, it's a big problem. Schusavis doesn't really work. Oh, so I just want to show you this little quick video. Hopefully it's quick. It's not so bad. Here we go. Mizot, Ima shel Avraham Avinu. Am telai batkar nevo. Why? This guy had a tie on me. He said he saw me in Europe. Mizot, Ima shel Aman. Am data or is it Abba shelo? No, am data. 
He says, I saw you in Europe, I deserve another 50 shekel. Okay, English or Hebrew? What are we doing on? Okay, so, so we're, we're playing game here. We're asking some questions, and if you know any answers, you get money. 50 shekel, an answer. You ready? We're going to start easy. First of all, Shalom Aleichem, your name is Yoni Meisels, right? I know your name because you do the daf every day in between customers. Look, look, look. Hebrew or English? Which one do you do? I'm doing English. English, okay. You ready? Just because you know the answers. Who was yes. Avram Avinu's mother? What was her name? Oh, my God. <laughs> It's one of the only Sparty I know that speaks perfectly this Bevis. You see, he learned in the Meshwarim. Seida. This guy is good. Utov. Utov. Okay. 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 Ding, 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 the Esser Shekel. Yofi. Shav. Misa Ima Shelavrama. We're getting, we're getting to it. Hamishim Shekel. Hamishim Shekel. Where is given the Mame Fun? Homon. Subach Shem is Subachaze. A Matlai Batorefti Masho. Hey, Matomel. Regal, regal, regal. A Matlai Batkanel. אה, נכון. בזכות אברהם אבינו, אמרתי את הקרקע. רגע, את יודעת? את יודעת? זה לא, אומרים את זה בכביש. אומרים בזכות אברהם אבינו, אמרתי את הקרקע. היא יודעת, היא יודעת. סגולה. כן? להבריח שוטרים, אתה אומר בזכות אברהם אבינו, אמרתי את הקרקע. כן, זה סגולה, אתה יודע את התשובה, לפחות. אני לא לוקח. זה משחק, אנחנו צודקים. למה אתה לא בא לשיעור? לא, 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 אני מפרסם, זה, זה, זה. It gave me back the money, so I shouldn't show it. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to be masking. There's no way in the world. Oh, this is good. No Hold way. On. I'm going to try. Two Gerek Hasidim. I know. I, I, I know. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> only on condition. <laughs> oh, that's a give a cook. Nem. Rega, yes, the other had. Nem. שאלתי אותך הומון, נכון? אמא של הומון, אמא של אברום, אמא של שמשון, אמא של דובד המלך. אמא של דובד המלך. רוצים לשחק משחק כאן? שקל כל תשובה? מי שיודע. אני רוצה לשחק, אני רוצה לשחק, הוא פה, 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 מצוין. מישהו שלא שמע את התשובה מקודם. מי זאת אמא של אברהם אבינו? חמישים שקל. הוא לא רוצה לשחק. Hold on, hold on, we're almost getting there. Eh? You want to? You want to? Who wants to? Eh? Yeah, eh, I'll give you the money. Yes. Because that's the answer. Yes. Yes. You want to go on? By the way, it's 14 minutes long. I'm going to cut it short. You ready? This might go on the shear. Oh, here we go. I'm asking you questions for 50 shekels and answer. Do you know Avram Avinu's mother's name? It's a hard one. It's Amtilai. That's right. Very good. But what's what's the? It's like this. That that's Bas Amtilai. What's the first part? Yeah, it's a good question. It's Amtilai. It's Amtilai is a very good part of it. That's half the answer. Very good. Same with the cup with the with the. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Carnivai. Something like that. Yeah. You got it. You got it. All right. We got a good one here. We got Chashuvim over. Chashuvim. All right. Raboy, so let's go. Now that we saw that, my point is, now you know the answers, remember the answers, and you have to show off when people ask you in the street what, the, what these names are, you'll know. That's, your point. That's the whole point of this thing. That's the whole point. Now, here, remember this for the rest of your life. Hello, I'm going to fire you in a second. 
Machloik, it's not a machloik, it's this one. Even the Avram, a maslai bas karnavoi. Karnavoi means a sheep. He made the Haman, mother of Haman, a maslai bas, uh, same name, a maslai bas oirefti. Oirefti is a raven. Visimonach, Tommy, Tommy. Haman's mother's Tommy. Here we have a, even a picture of what she might have looked like. Visimonach, Tommy, Tommy, tar, tar. And Avram Avinu's mother is tar, she's a sheep. He made the David. Ashi, I'm, I'm happy you love it. Nitzeves bas Adel Shema, the mother of David Amelech, doesn't say anywhere. So the, the, the Kaifrim, as the Gemara is going to say, the last, no, no, if you know all these names, what about her? And then you'll tell them. Nitzeves bas Adel Shema, you might be the only person that, from all the people that I asked that knew the name. Nitzeves bas, what's your name again? Tell us your name. I know me. I know you. First of all, you lost uh, 100 pounds since last time I saw you. 30 pounds, so you're a different person. That's true. And what's your name? Tell them your name. Greenwald. Mike Greenwald from Chicago. Very good. From St. Louis. From St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. You know what. Ime the Shimshain Slofoinis. Shimshain's mother is Slofoinis. The Achosei Nashion. If you want to know, oh, this one I didn't ask anybody. Shimshain Nagibur's sister's name was Nashion. Lemayn of Kimino, the Chuvas Aminim. If Apikors asks you questions about Tanakh, about the, the personalities, oh, who's this? You know the answer. Hello, you ready? When did they have a sister? Before or after? I mean, because they don't have Oh, kids. yeah, it's a good child. Good catch. When she uh, together. She Maybe she's a twin. The man of Kimino is using me. Vomarav, Honabar Rovo, Omarav, Esa Shonim, Nechbash, Avromovinu. Ten years of Avromovinu was imprisoned. Sholish Bikuto, Besheva Bekardu. Rav Dimi Ben Ardo, Masni Ipchos, it was maybe seven in Kuto and three in Kardu because Nimroid. Put him in there, Terach, snitched on his own son and said that he broke the Getchkes. What did Avram answer? Avram said, I didn't break them. They're, they're so powerful, they actually fought each other. They ran away. So the big question is, how come when Lovan asked Yaakov Avinu, how come, what, what happened to the Getchkes? How come Yaakov Avinu didn't answer what his, what his grandfather said? They, were, they ran away. So the answer is that the, something that you could answer to your father not necessarily can you answer to Yishver. So <laughs> 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 I'm going, I'm on a, I'm on a, <laughs> on a roll. So I'm thinking about Omar Avchizda. It might be true. It's not a joke. It's true. Omar Avchizda. Ivro ze'ira de kuta ze'ur kazdam. Where the nest happened to Avram Avinu when he was in the, in the furnace, that's ur kazdam. Says the Rajbam. Anybody ever go past there, we must make a bracha. Okay, so you saw it. If somebody passes by a place where his father was in a car accident and survived, I don't know the halach exactly, but it seems like you have to say, with a with a Shem Hashem, probably. We know what a shura is, unfortunately. You go to Levi, you do this long line of Nichum, when, when the oval comes out of the cemetery. So they all stood in a line, and they said, Wow, these are, these are Lushen that you see on the signs, and then the Manigai lost the, our leader, and the cruise ship, Shabbat Kabrinita. That's a that's a that's a lotion that you hear in Elal. Kam Dabel Kalvanit, yeah. So the captain, sponsored by Yaakov Sitron, who took the videos yesterday. Yishkoyach to Yaakov. Is he? That's not his editing. You should know that was not his editing. That was Yoshi's editing. I know, but the uh, film taking Yishkoyach for coming at such short notice. And not charging him the why he does it. Joe Barry, is in, huh? Joe Barry is in the Reshet and the Mamad now while they're sorry, he's going to die. I would love to see. Could you patch him in? Joe Barry. Well, I said there's a bunch of people in Moreshet. Here he is. Wow, Joe. We're very proud of you. You're in the Mamad. What's going on? The siren's going off in Moreshet. They were about five minutes ago, or seven minutes ago is at it, this point. Is it true that uh, missiles fell in Moreshet yesterday? Uh, yes, they did, and we have five houses that are very badly damaged. Um, five, six 
and, and about 15 houses partially damaged. Wow. And uh, five cars that are totally destroyed completely. There's just a shell left. But Baruch Hashem, absolutely no one was injured at all. That's a nice. Wow. You know, uh, property we could replace. So Baruch Hashem, the people are saved. You know why? You're saving them by learning Torah. How many other people in Moresh do the daf with us? After Avi Mandelbaum passed away, unfortunately, it's only me. What about the other guys that I saw then that night? They're, they fell off? And there, was one, there was one other fellow, uh, but he's doing it now locally. We have five different Daf Yomi Shil in here. Oh, competition. Trying to convince them to go to the Israeli Shir, the Hebrew Shir. I've not yet convinced them. All right. Anyways, we got to learn this Daf. It's a long one. Stay safe. Thanks for, for being with us. This is a beautiful thing. Wow. See, people in Chutzlar don't understand what it means to go shelter down, close the mamad, and you actually had damage close by. Unbelievable. All right. Second sponsor, Lili Nishmas, those six hostages that were brutally murdered in cold blood. Says the Gemara, is to, you know, to, to feel big. Akush Baruch Hu makes people, gives them their different jobs that they feel haughty, bigger than the next guy. Omer Avchanan, Barav Omerav, Afilu Reish Gargusa, this is the smallest Balgaiv in the world. He's in charge of telling his two neighbors which day they should use the water. It's like in our days, it's like the guy that's in charge of Adabayat. You know, like uh, he's in charge of the building. Not you, not your, your, your Chosh of uh, Adabayat. You are, you used to be, no? It's a, it's a hard job, actually. And how do they pay you back? We're not going to talk about it. Mishmei the Muk. This is going to be the head of the Varabait. We said that Elimelech was Goladar. And why was he punished? Because he left there to destroy. That's not the reason. So even if they found bran, terrible food, they wouldn't leave Eretz Yisrael. They didn't have what to eat. So why were they punished? They should have davened. And when you don't daven for your friend, you hear what's going on there? You don't daven for somebody, you have the ability to daven and Hashem would answer them because of the door. And you don't do that, you get punished. They should have gathered the people and daven. When everybody has a lot of money, but the fruit is expensive. But if people don't have money. If there's no money, and the price of the wheat is regular, you're not allowed to leave, then you're allowed to leave, because there's no money. Simon Sela Poil Charuva Talia Amrin. Domer Rebbe Yoichna. Amrin. Domer Rebbe Yoichna. Nihirna, I remember, and he says, there's a few things here that he says, I remember. I remember that the wheat was for saw for Sela. Remember those pictures in, in Africa of those little children with their swollen stomachs? So I remember, he says, I remember kids, people had swollen stomachs. They didn't have what to eat in Tveria. Middle-less Iser. They didn't have an Iser. Iser is 1% of a Sela. It's a 196 of a Sela. They didn't have a Sela. For a Sela, you could buy four saw of wheat. They didn't have a hundredth of that. They didn't have 1% of that. The workers, they wouldn't rent themselves out to go to east Karta of the city. Why? They would die from smelling the delicious smell of the bread, just from the, they didn't have food. So if they just smelled it, poof, they would die. And they needed money, but they wouldn't work for people that lived east of the city. I remember when a child would, Crack open a carib. carib. Here, we have a carib here. Now, you know, today's caribs are slightly different. I don't know if uh, Yosef could do it. It would be geschmack if he could do it. The honey coming out of the carib would ooze down on the two hands of the child. You go like this. Look what happens today when you do it. It's hard, like, uh, but Yosef has... No, I don't know if he could do it. But anyways, it's a hard one. Ariel today. Ariel, oh, okay. Anyways, today's carib, 
what he's saying is that you read the Sadaris, the fruit was so delicious. It had, today you eat boxer on, on, on like Baimer in school. They, if you don't eat it, you, the worst punishment now is to eat a piece of the Nairvayim. I used to eat it and say, why? I feel bad for Hashem Baichai. In those days, it was unbelievable. It was like all, all honey. It was Gishmak. I remember, oh, here, hold on. He did a little picture for this. Here's the picture of the kid uh, cracking open a buckter and it oozes out, honey. And this is the, even meat was marbleized. It has so much fat in it. It was gishmak. A whole line of, of fat would, would Pour out of it Mereshura from the top of the wall of Adla Ara until the ground. They would play Talia, a boy, a girl, a in the marketplace. 16, 17 year olds would, would play together. And they didn't think about Chet. Yeah, the famous Nigan. You help me out? Oh, the Rebbe. That's a little better. It's a Pasuk in Zechariah. All right, so, but it means that they, they, they didn't think about Ched at all at that age. But Rabbi Yochan, on the Hirno, can have an Amrim Be Midrasha. But he, rem- in other words, it's changed in his lifetime. He remembers it used to be like that, but no longer. When people say in the base marriage, the Moidel I admit, the, I, I could hear what Abed Zor is saying, you'd fall to their hands. The Misrachitz Alehain, if you gave your belief in them, delay the line, then they rule you. Ksiv, Machlon Vichilyar, Uksiv, Yoish Vesarov. Two names. We know their names are Machlam and Kilian, but they are also referred to as Yoish and Saraf. Which one is it? So we have a Machlam and Ravish Mo. Chadom and Machlam and Kilian Shmon. Their names at the Briz were Machlam and Kilian. Why does the Torah call them Saraf and Yoish? Yoish. Shinesiyah, Shimon Agula. Ain't Shum Yoish. They had Yoish from the Gula. They married Goyim because they thought it's not going to be a Gula. Saraf. Shinesiyah, Sarif and Makayim. They deserve the death penalty. Why? The boy said, why did they deserve the death penalty? Because we said before, they didn't daven. They should have daven for the, for the klal and they didn't. <laughs> the boy said, I have to warn you guys. If you don't daven for me on Rosh Hashanah, oy va voy. Or the whole MDY. It says, if you don't daven for your friend. Did I skip? The name actually at the bris was Yoish and Saraf. What's this added name? They went out of Eretz to Chutzlars. They made it Choyl. Their body is Choyl. They, they went to Tuma. This is a pasuk, very interesting pasuk that that says all the people that are connected to Shevet Yehuda. Now there's questions on this Pasuk, and we have to explain the Pasuk to mean people that are connected either through their mother or through marriage, but they all have a connection to Yehuda. These are the, this is the Pasuk, Lachem. So the Gemara goes through each one. Yehoshua swore to give on. It's actually in Parashat Shavua, the second Pasuk in this week's Parashat. So Rashi brings on the spot this story. That the famous story, the Kananim, they, they, they saw what Klai was doing, decimated, the Mamish destroying their, their uh, enemies, Halavai. By the way, yesterday, when we heard during the Shir, we heard the planes going, I went back home and they said they just attacked, it was then it was like three, four hundred um, targets. targets, and by the end of the day, it was 1,300. So we Mamish heard them on the way. Halavai, Akush Baruch, give us the same kind of, uh, of win. And uh, it should be over. And uh, whatever his name, I forgot his name already, from Moresh, it should be able to come out of his... I mean, I, I personally, I have to tell you, I had a very bad night's sleep. I don't know, I'm, I have to figure out how to get rid of the, uh, the... 
I have the red alert. The entire night it was going off. You guys, I'm sure you, whoever didn't turn it off, it was beeping. I was not sleeping. What? I don't know how to do it. And, uh, and I felt, no, I felt like I want to, if they're getting up and running out to their shelters, at least I should know about it. I should hear about it and wake me up a little bit. I should be but it was a very bad night's sleep for me. The argument is Yeshua, I have to turn it off. Shagim Shua, the Anshi Givain. So, Akopanim, so Yeshua accepted these Knanim who pretended that they're from a different country, they came from far away. And when he figured it out, he said, I, I already swore to them, so I'll, I'll make you, you'll be the woodchoppers and the, the water drawers. Shagim Shua, the Anshi Givain, Banshi Kezeva. Did somebody just, did it just go off for somebody? I just, that's the sound. So they're not really, well, they, came, they became part of Klai Yisrael, but they, they had to work for Klai Yisrael. They came from Yehuda. We just said they gave up on the Gula. They married women from Mayav. She came and she came, returned to Klai Yisrael and she married Beis Lechem Yehuda. What does that mean? The one that was here before everything existed. In other words, he orchestrated this whole thing that Elimelech and his children should leave Eretz Yisrael, they die, Rus will come back, marry Bayaz. And like this, we have the Malchus of David and Shleiman. By the way, we can never forget, and we say this, oh, David and Shlema, and we forget about Yishai, who was David's father, who never sinned in his life. He only died. Yeah, David, uh, also. Okay. It's not also, I'm just saying we, we forget the, the godless of these people. So the Gemara takes another passage, it goes through each word. Yenodav was a it was like, um, what do they call them, these, uh, those Arabs that, uh, the Bedouins. He told his sons, don't build a house, don't do anything that's permanent because you might have to get up in a minute and run and that's what happened. When, uh, so they listened to him, and they kept their father's Shvua and Akashbuch had a time, and look, you, you keep your father's Shvua and you don't keep my Shvua. We call him a sapling. As, <clears throat> as time went on, he got stronger and stronger like a tree as it gets bigger and bigger. Ugdeira is Sanhedrin and the fence is Sanhedrin. We know that Sanhedrin made a lot of Xeris and Takanas in order for, to, to close up the holes of Klai Yisrael and made a fence. She saw a great, great grandchild's kingdom. He put a chair for the mother of the king. Now who's the mother of Shlema? Basheva. That's not her. It's referring to the mother of all mothers, Rus. Without Salmonella, whatever that means. What does that mean? Without worms. That the, food, the, the wheat is not going to have worms. It's not going to rot. It seems like Rav Sheshit. Also we have a right to Rav Nachman. Then it's worms. When Shemitah is over, they'll say, oh, give us the new, the new crap. Why? Because the old crap, kola. What does kola mean? It disappeared. How does a crap disappear? Worms. So you see that it's worms. That the, they waited all the way until it's completely ripe. Now, if you're starving, you don't wait until it's ripe. You just grab whatever you can grab before it ripens. You see that there's no problem with worms. Okay. So over here he uses the lotion of Ra. Ra means that it's spoiled, not that it was eaten by worms. Anything that's older is better. It's aged. Even when it comes to wheat, aged wheat is better than new wheat. Mainly like wheat and Wine. How do I know that this applies to everything? So the Rishbam says an unbelievable thing. It's connected to the Rishbam inside. Eretz Yisrael has something beautiful. An apple. 
which it's not the way to, to, to age an apple. They'll be able to last for very long. So much in storage and all the new stuff. What are we going to do with the new stuff if we didn't get rid of the old stuff? Everything that's aged is great besides for dates, the shikra of beer, the harsana, and herring. Hadron Allah Hamoiches as vino, Hadron Allah Hamoiches as vino, Hadron Allah Hamoiches as vino. Oh, yeah.